Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show, and on this episode, we're talking about the most iconic scenes in all of science fiction, at least our favorite iconic scenes. Who wants to start? Just throw one out there. Bob, go ahead. What's your favorite scene? All right, I'm going to have to go with The Thing. Yeah. Almost so many iconic scenes, but the John, John Carpenter's, Carpenter's The yeah. Thing. John Carpenter's yeah. The yeah. Thing, of course. Uh, <laughs> all right, so in, in this scene, one of the characters uh, has a appears to have a heart attack, and the doctor comes over, he's doing the, uh, he's doing the paddles, and the chest opens up, the hands go in, because there's, there's no chest there anymore, and there's teeth, yeah. and the chest closes, chops off his arms, now then they use an actor who's an amputee, and they put a doctor mask on him, and you can't even tell, it's, it's so good, and he's like, his arms are amputated, so he falls away. Yeah, all practical effects. Right. All practical Pre effects, yeah. then, and then, uh, then this creature Flies out of his out of the body cavity, and then of course McCready hits it with fire. Things burning, and then and the head stretches, stretches, then breaks, and you see like green fibrous nastiness. Yeah. And they did that because if they made it realistic, they never would have released the movie. It would have been too gross. They said you got to cut that scene, or we're going to give you an X or yeah. something like that. That was very so, smart of them. Very yeah. smart. And it looked, made it more it, science fiction. It looked fantastic. Then the head droops to the ground, and then. It has its tongue and pulls itself, then sprouts legs. So it's a spider head and starts walking around. <laughs> and one of the characters says beautifully, You gotta be fucking kidding. You gotta be fucking kidding me yeah. when he looks what like that. What everyone's thinking, right? Yeah, exactly great, what everyone's thinking. You know, An amazing scene. The pra no CG. There's no CG and here. At the time, all practical effects. The character Rob Palmer, Palmer, Palmer was a thing. Yeah, was the, a thing. the guy who yeah. had that quote yeah. was, was, yeah. was one of the aliens. And this... The, the effects in this movie are still hold up. They're still wonderful. They, these effects put Rob Bottin, or Botin, in the hospital after they filmed, after principal photography. He went to the hospital because he was completely spent. fried, totally yeah. spent. Amazing scene. I remember watching that in 1982. I remember watching it and just being like flabbergasted. Blown yeah. away. Blown away. Just one awesome little scene after the other. Yeah. Fantastic. Never before seen. Never seen since. And, great and scene. the whole movie is great. Oh, yeah. You know, and... Uh, you know, it does capture. Obviously, we have a you know a fascination with with gross things to some extent, alien things. Mm -hmm. You know, bizarre and personhood. What, what does it mean to be a person? What does it, when, yeah. When are you, know, you? When are you not you? When is somebody else? Somebody well, else? You that scene this? though, it's it's incredibly iconic for a number of reasons. One, because it shows just how screwed they are. Yeah. You don't know how screwed they are really until that scene. That scene is when... Yeah, you're the, kind of getting an idea, but that removes all doubt. Yeah, that like if you had any in, hope for our heroes in that movie, it was gone at that scene. Right. Yeah, because it tips yeah. into insanity. And, it, and it, the scene just keeps chipping away. Like, yeah. You know, the thing turns into a mouth. Oh, my God, it bit his leg. Then right, it yeah. explodes. Then you see that, that, that vision of the creature floating up there with, like, the, the tendrils coming down and everything. Like, it was, just, it was disgusting. It was like a monstrous version of the, mm. of the person that it was trying to take over, which I thought was incredible. But then... To add insult to injury, another piece of it crawls away. Yeah. That's why it just it, it, it keeps pounding you down, pounding yeah. you down. And I can't help it now when I watch for it. Like, I'm rooting for the monster. Like, yeah. I just <laughs> love the monster. It is the coolest monster yeah. I've ever seen. There's nothing more horrifying than, well, wait, being in, a, in the deep ocean with a great white coming at you, that's horrifying. <laughs> but yeah, but, but you're right. That is the almost the quintessential monster, yeah. right? That creature. Because it invades your body. Remember, yeah. we talked about this. It, yeah. it goes inside your body. Because it killed the one one character from the inside out. The guy who, right. who had the heart attack. Just, he was he just was feeling a little sick, and it just turns out the alien had almost completely taken over him. Right. Until he, he just collapsed. And, he, he, and at, while he was replicating him, he replicated his bad heart because yeah. he didn't really know. Hey, this heart has a defect. Um, and that's what kind of took out. Well, what, I didn't even really interpret that way. You just interpret it as that he was just eating him, just completely eating him from the inside out. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I could see how you would and think And then he that. would remake him. You know, he right. wasn't just replicating him in sight to. I think he was just going to remake him. Well, if you way. listen to The Things, which mm -hmm. is the, uh, it's like the audio podcast sequel, basically, no, it's not a sequel. It's basically, it's, an, it's a story. It's a short, it's a short mm -hmm. story of the movie, The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, but same movie, but, but from, from, the, the, from the point of view yeah. of The Thing. And in that story... It, it talks about the creature's thinking to itself, and it's and it says that you know he talks okay. about replicating the heart. So that so you could legitimately look at it both ways. Right, right, right. But, it, yeah, but sure, wonderful, but anyway. such a such a great movie. Um, Carpenter really killed it, and and a lot of it had to do with the fact that they, they he had a big delay making that movie. He had like a hundred days where he was like, oh crap, we we gotta wait. And during that time, he really fine tuned and tweaked 
the, the movie and made it even better it than, shows. than it was. And mm -hmm. it really it shows. Totally shows. It's craftsmanship. It's it just takes time to make something that good. Right. And it it's his best movie, in my opinion. That, mm -hmm. that oh, is his best movie. I agree. By far. All right. I'm, I'm just going to start with my, my favorite science Shoot fiction right. movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Of Space Odyssey. There's a lot of, a lot of iconic scenes in that movie. So I'm going to mention two very quickly. So you have the, the scene with the monolith, like mm -hmm. the first one where it's the, they have the proto-humans you know, gathered yeah. around it. And just that whole sequence... You know, it, um, there's no dialogue. You know, you're just watching what these, what these creatures are doing. And, you know, they, 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 their curiosity gets the better of them and they come up to the monolith and they touch it. And it's, it's some kind of transcendent experience. And they start going apeshit. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, then that's followed by, you know, you have the, the one creature who's like looking at a bone and the remains of a tapir, you know, like a, a, a boar-like creature. Mm -hmm. And he's sort of pi piecing it together. Like, oh, yeah, I could... I could take this bone and smash his skull in, you know? Right, yeah. And like, so the way, just the way that whole scene plays out where you could just see the lights going on. Um, could you imagine what it must have been like to be that actor? And yeah. Have Kubrick be like, this is exactly <laughs> how I want <laughs> right. you to do it, right? Because he was right. so particular. Like, like, this is the guy that would mm. shoot, like, it's from The Shining, right? I'll never yeah. forget you told me this. So he had the actors get out of a car and walk into a building and they did it like a hundred times. Yeah. Just no, it was worse than that. It was a scene of, of, of Catman Scruthers sitting in a chair in a plane doing nothing. Oh, that was another example. And that seems like a hundred times for him to sit and do nothing. To get the right vibe. Whatever. Yeah, whatever he did was, nothing right. <laughs> until he did yeah. it right. Um, just exacting. All right, but the other scene, what's coming? What's the, people think of 2001, what's the scene? That well, I mean, when, when they're shutting off Hal. When they're shutting off Hal, right. That's an absolutely iconic scene. Daisy. It's so they're, creepy. They're so, it's so creepy. And, you know, it brings together so much of the movie. It's such a turning point in that movie because Hal is one of the most interesting villains in all of science fiction. Think about it. He's clearly the villain in yeah, that sure, movie. Yeah, sure, man. He's scary. Um, he's got all the control. He's very of your scary, and you, he's inscrutable. What's why is he doing this? Right. You know, what are his motives? And you can't change his mind. What? Yeah. What? Cha what tipped it all off? And yeah, there's, like, there's no po point in any further conversation, Dave. I'm sorry, I can't do that, Dave. Yeah, like, yeah, like the actor who did his voice did, yeah. eliminated just enough emotion. Yes. where it's creepy, but you still hear the intent. It was. It was the uncanny valley. Emotionally, yeah. <laughs> and it was very deliberate. I mean, Hal was the most emotional human person in the movie. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that was the whole point. That was the whole point. The yeah. AI was actually the most, you know, the most human. But at the same time, he wasn't quite human, and you couldn't really appeal to him. Like you couldn't like beg with him. He's just or like bribe him. It's just like pure a Terminator. You can't. Yeah, you yeah. can't. You can't. Yeah, you can't bribe him. You can't. You can't reason with him. Um, once he decided that he was going to do that course of action, he yeah. was locked in. That was it. Um, and then it, it challenges our concept of what is it, is is how human you know is it self aware? I am a how nine thousand computer. And then when uh, when Dave is deleting his memory bit by bit, you know he's like, I feel my mind going, Dave, and you start to feel sorry for yeah. him at that point. Right? There, I mean, it's amazing it's after everything. Over that... I know in this short period of time, you realize he's just a child. Mm -hmm. You know, Hal is just a child, mm -hmm. and. You really, you get question, can we really blame him? Something went wrong, and it was probably not his fault. Well, I always thought it was the alien obelisk presence that was forcing ev the monolith. Really? Forcing evolution. I thought that he was a pawn of that effort. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, in the 2001 version, um, it's ambiguous, and I like it that way. Yes. Uh, in 2010, you hate that. they explain it, and I think they took a tremendous yeah, no, amount of weight. You don't need to explain it. it. You, know, you shouldn't. It, yeah, it didn't need to be The fun is talking about it. The fun is making your argument. Yeah. You know, when you, when you hit the nail on the head sometimes, it just doesn't, it just, it doesn't do anybody any favors. Yeah. You know? It just sucks the life out of the, yeah. whole, the whole thing. All right, I'll, I'll pick my number one. Try to best of that, Jay. I can. I can best that. Uh, I, the uh, binary sunset in movie four of Star Wars, <laughs> oh. which is, it, this is the first Star Wars movie, right? Yeah. This is the one with Luke when he's a farm boy. Um, so uh. I, I, this scene is so unbelievably important to me. I've never been moved repeatedly by anything in a movie in my life like this scene. And, I, mm -hmm. and I, it's, it's a little inexplicable because I can tell you why I love it. I can tell you why it, it's impactful. But I still don't fully wrap my head around how such a short amount of footage can do so much yeah. to me. Because mm -hmm. it really is very simple. Luke is upset because his uncle basically said, you're stuck in this shithole for another year. Yeah. And 
Get out, you know, and then Luke looks out, out longing, longingly towards, you know, the distance. The, the binary yeah, sunset, the binary sun which is, represents sort of the galaxy. He just wants to get out there well, off this, this rock that he's stuck on. It is a combination of the setup that mm -hmm. he, he has this discussion with his aunt and uncle. His forlorn, you know, for, mm. forlorn, you know, he has an ennui, whatever you want to call it. Something is not deeply not right with his mm. reality. And then the, the music. Yeah, the, the music. music. That is it. So the, the combination of powerful visuals and powerful music is greater than the sum of its parts, yes. right? Yep. And there's some directors really like, and Kubrick is one, and definitely with Star Wars, you know, John Williams. When the music and the mood of what you're watching you know, clicks. Yeah, there's, there's a magic crisscross. There's that a synergy happens, yeah. that happens. It is totally magic. Yeah. And I'm a complete sucker for that. I can, I mean, that completely gets right to my soul when that happens. But there is something really cool that happens to me when I watch that scene now. Now, I yeah. saw it in the theater. I don't, what was I, 12 years old? Yeah. You know, I mean, I was, I you were, was, you were nine. Nine years old when I saw that, sitting right next to you guys. Yeah. Um, it changed me forever. It sunk into my consciousness. And in my unconsciousness, and it mm -hmm. completely changed me forever. So, I, it's this is the hard part for me. When I watch it, there is a moment right there. There's a moment when I remember exactly what it felt like to really? sit in that theater, and mm -hmm. that Star Wars cool. feeling that is almost completely evaporated out of my mind only comes back in that scene. Ever yeah, oh, out wow. of all of the first three movies, that's the yeah. only thing that brings me back to my childhood. At all in my life. That's it. There are a lot of scenes in that movie that, get, that bring me back. The, the movie is a nostalgic experience. Absolutely. Because it but, does, yeah. but that scene, though, that scene was the hook. Now, this, yeah. is, the, this is the thing that I've said many times about that scene. There, we were all the, that kid sitting in yeah. the audience. Boy, girl, it doesn't matter. Every, every young person that mm -hmm. watched that movie, pretty much everybody that watched it, why did Star Wars kill people? That was the scene where the first real hook gets into you, and you're like, oh, man, you are, so, you are totally sold on that movie when that scene happens. And that is the turning point. And that, to me, is when you're writing a movie, you need a hook like need that. Those moments. You need that moment, one or, one or more of those moments to really make the audience care. And we loved Star Wars. I think we loved the whole brand, I think, could, could arguably be hinged on the effectiveness of that scene. Hmm. I know that sounds super profound, but you're overcalling it a little bit. No, no, there no. Were I'm many, not, there were many I'm scenes not. in that movie though that that made it like even there, Steve, I would there argue, were, but that was the one. That's when yeah. it started. Like we like the profound. droids. It is that is the profound. That's when the adventure started. That's it. Everything exactly. was a setup before then. Right. That was right at that it's moment. Right at that was exactly. When the adventure began. Exactly when that moment ends, which yeah. is seconds later. Like you're in the oh my god, and then all of a sudden the music changes and. Uh, C-3PO is saying R2-D2 took off. And you're right. That's exactly when, the, yeah. when, when Luke's reality changes. But there the are other begins. moments in, in Star Wars that also like blows you away and gives you the vibe. But like the very opening scene when that Star Destroyer yeah. is going overhead. Huge. And it's going and it's going and it keeps going. Like, oh my God, that's massive. Yeah. That massiveness is part of the experience of Star Wars. It's part of the brand. Yeah, you're totally right. And it was right. right in the opening scene. I can't scene. take that away. And you, right in the opening scene. Want to hear a scene. cool fact about that yeah. scene? The ship that they built, that the first ship, Princess yeah, Leia's the ship, ship. Two things about it. One, that was going to be the, the Millennium, Millennium Falcon. Falcon. Yes. Yes. And two, that model, because it was going to be the main cool ship in the movie, it was, super detailed. was way bigger than the Star Destroyer. Oh, no way. Yes, like that thing was this big. I don't know how big it was in real life. It was probably even much bigger. It was probably the size of this table. But let's say just for comparison, so people could see. The, that thing was this big, what and the thing? Star Destroyer was this big. The, the first ship, I mean, it, it it was all like trick photography. It yeah. was just the way the way that sure. they, they managed the cameras and everything. But when you wow. look at it, you're like, there's no way. There's no way that that model is, is that much bigger than the other model. Yes, it was. That, cool. That's how that's how good that. they did the effects in that mm -hmm. that first movie, and it was all practical as well. Like oh my God, very that, little digital anything in that movie. ILM Industrial Light and Magic was born uh, for mm -hmm. for that movie, and yeah. they could never have pulled off a lot of the things that did they, they did. I mean, computer controlled filming. I mean, that's yep. it was kind of uh, mm -hmm. pretty much born at that time, I think. Yeah, but when yeah. you watch how they did a lot of the effects, like it again, the the, the sum is greater than. The, I mean, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. parts. Yeah. You know, you're looking at how they did the scroll in the beginning. They just videotaped, they, sh they shot a screen that was angled down. And that's how the, the words did what they did. They, yeah. you know, they went off into the, the, the sunset yeah. that way. Like, what? Who would like, guess that that's I know. It was so thing. effective. 
So anyway, not the first time it was done, but yeah, it was still. Mm -hmm. Star Wars has other, other, other. That, top that will stand scenes. in for the franchise because yeah. there's so many. Again, right? Yeah, again, I mean, we'll you know, we we'll spend all night talking. I'm your about father, and blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, so many of them. Star Wars is riddled, silly, silly with <laughs> fantastic scenes. I mean, right. I, I'm like spinning right now. I just want to start talking about. But, but let's move ahead. on. Yeah, go ahead, give, Bob. Your, give your second choice. So for me, the other, another scene that just totally sticks mm -hmm. out was from The Matrix, the first Matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, Neo, wakes up, Neo wakes up, and after Morpheus says, things are about to get weird, he swallows that red pill, and he wakes up, and he's like, and he sees what reality really is. And he Talk wakes, about a turning point in a movie. Oh, my yeah. God. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, in, he's in the pod. I mean, imagine, yeah. imagine, you know, imagine towers as, as big as uh, you know, the Empire State Building filled with thousands and millions of these pods housing people and these pods are used by those those uh the alien robots that come not the aliens but the robots that come and grab you and use you as a battery yeah. um and and your existence is really just like you know an illusion and yes. it's such a powerful scene in the matrix so but the, that, such a, that whole thing though like the whole thing that happens to him it's it's really scary i mean it, you know first off it, i don't know if it seemed like that has ever happened in a movie before The Matrix, like how jarring it was. Like you literally switched realities. And mm -hmm. it was a harsh transition. You know, you, you know, he's in oh, the thing, yeah. he has to tear out of it, like, you know, which was really you know, it was all well, this jelly. The Wizard of Oz. Then his <laughs> Yeah, you're right. No, there's I mean There's other yeah, there's other examples of it, but you're right, but that was did it more impactful, I think, more uh, more epically than any other movie. And you guys have to remember, this is one of the when you have kids, um, this you Brings your, your kids are still a little young for this, but as you as they go back and watch all the classic movies, you realize you know like they don't get how epic and monumental a movie like The Matrix was because now that's the 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 Matrix yeah. is infused in yeah. the culture. It's infused in later movies. Yeah. It's like no, you don't understand. That was the first movie to do that. The whole bullet time yep, yep. Yeah. and the freeze frame and you change your yeah, angle yeah, yeah. and this the whole look of the movie, the whole Neo look with the coat and everything. So I mean, you're saying they're they're exposed to the effect that it had on the culture, so they're already kind of familiar. Yeah, so with they yeah the when they see it, it's nothing new to them. It's like they're or they're the product of that movie and they don't even realize it. Yeah. And I have to remind them, no, that movie. Right. Was it was right. no? What do they say when you tell them that? Is it like it, they, it's, it, they, they can't they, they can't imagine? It's, it's like these kids, you know. You know it's like Vader, you know, when Vader says, "I'm your father." It's like remember when your I know, kids I, saw I, that. I, I'm, I'm watching Empire Strikes Back with my two daughters, and I'm waiting for that scene. And Luke, I, no, no, I am your father. And yeah. they're like, no reaction, whatever. I'm like, I had to stop the like, <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute. <laughs> How could you guys watch that scene and have no reaction? Like, I pretty much figured, you know. yeah. Because he realized <laughs> it was infused in the culture. Yeah, they knew, of course, he's his when father. When we saw it in the movies, blew us away. We were doing that thing. You know, we were like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like leaning over, touching each other, freaking out. You remember whole, that? I remember, Bob. Of course, oh I did. God. The whole movie theater, like you, everybody's ass puckered during that moment. <laughs> you know? That has. That was a gen oh my god. Genuinely, probably the biggest movie surprise. At the cinema, absolutely the biggest plot twist I think I've ever experienced, and there have been some other big ones. Yeah, but that's got to be not, yeah. it's top five until not Sixth top Sense. Sixth, Sixth Sense is a big one. Yeah, the only was, person on the but, set it was it was Mark Hamill, and and it was George <laughs> Lucas, and I think of course the the producer. Yeah, um, but nobody else knew it, and the actor was reading bullshit lines. Yeah. Prowse was reading some other bullshit. He was saying something else. You know, I am the you know really yeah. You know, yeah, they didn't know. And then when they found out, when Harrison Ford and... and uh, well, Luke, well... When, when they found out that he knew they were pissed, everyone was like, why didn't you tell us? He's like, I couldn't tell, you know, like... Wow, yeah. awesome. Mark Hamill is so awesome, He's by great. the way. He's he is great. great. Uh, yeah, so The Matrix. Oh, yeah, iconic great, movie. Great but we, a lot one of more thing about that, that scene, scene I have to say, was, though. Was, 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 His pod then turned into a toilet, toilet flush. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, your malfunction, flush him down the toilet. Which was like the ultimate, like, yes, your existence is bullshit. You're, <laughs> it's bullshit. Like, what the fuck? That was so you're awesome. You're a dead battery. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, I'm going to, my next pick is a little bit different than I think the movies we've talked about so far, Jurassic Park. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, and I've seen this, again, this is one of those movies I'll see every couple of years. I'll watch it again. And it totally holds up. It's better than all of its sequels, mm -hmm. you know, oh, which yeah, is always yeah, disappointing. Yeah. Like, really? You couldn't have... But that's because this was a work of art, yeah. not just a, hey, let's do a sequel for money kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there's two scenes, again, there's like so riddled with great scenes, but the two scenes that I think represent sort of opposites that come together in that movie, there's the, the scene when 
the scientists first see yes. the brachiosaurus. Yes. They first see the dinosaur. Oh, oh, giant brachiosaurus. I remember yeah. that. That was well because amazing. you get to see the scene in his face for yes. in their faces. Yes. Their faces. The, the it's their reaction yes. that sells that totally. scene. in a beautiful way. Totally. It doesn't matter totally. what's happening. It doesn't matter what they're looking at. They sold that scene. But right. it, it represents the wonder of what that would be. And it represents the wonder in the audience watching that movie. Like, mm -hmm. they're, we're reacting yep. like they're reacting. Yep. You know, Spielberg so it was, totally knew what he was doing totally when he wrote nailed those it. scenes. Yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. So that was like just... Everything, all of the wonder and the hope and the fantasy that science could potentially bring wrapped up in that their reaction in that mm -hmm. one in that one moment the opposite end of the spectrum in that movie was the scene with the t-rex chasing the jeep yeah. which represents all of the horror mm. that could also come from when things oh, yeah. get out of control um so that was like the two end sides of the coin for yeah. that object movie. in the mirror is closer than it <laughs> no. appears and yeah, just the right amount of humor at the yeah. right moment yeah. Yeah, that was My brilliant God, how did, it was handled so perfectly well that was terrifying and that scene where the character's name was Ian, the mathematician guy. Yeah, he's Chaos. running, running with the the, uh, yeah. the flare, and because he, he's smart enough to know, like I've got to distract this thing, yeah. Yeah. and he and he throws it, and that thing starts running towards the camera, and you get that like real legit like Terror. okay this this digitally created well first off there there was a practical version of that mm -hmm. of the dinosaur, but then you know there's a digital version of it where it's running and all that stuff. I mean, I had never seen anything like that before. Like that that was a mind blowing experience, that scene. And again, like when when the T Rex is catching up to the to the Jeep, Dr. Sadler screams. Like there's just like this one two second scene where she's like screaming in reaction to it. <laughs> totally sells it. I mean she was full of adject terror as you would be yeah. if oh, yeah. a T-Rex well, is chasing you down exactly and but if a T-Rex is chasing scene. you down you feel its footsteps yes and they they got that across yeah, in the movie they did. so that's why that movie was wonderful because it could make you feel wonder and then absolute terror yes. at the same thing and it works every time every and it time works every time it. you watch yeah. that movie you're like whoa it's blown away by that scene so I, I what do you got Jay another monster movie the movie Alien of course, mm -hmm. the chestburster scene. Yeah. It, you know, there's two, oh. two chestburster scenes, right, Bob? Your, yours and mine. This, this is <laughs> the, the chestburster scene, yeah. though. Yeah. So, you know, the, Iconic. the real quick yeah. summary is they're, they're, the, uh, the guy who had the, the face hugger on him, he's up, they're, they're eating. You know, we get this moment of like levity. They're laughing, and everything seems to be back to normal. Everything's fine. Then he starts kind of coughing and choking, and then they roll him over, and they don't know what to do. They don't know what's going on. Now, meanwhile, that son of a bitch, Ash, the whole time, which is so awesome. When you watch the movie Alien mm -hmm. and you watch it, what Ash is doing the whole time, yep. they did such a good job. It's of, brilliant. Of, of, you don't know what's happening when you see it the first time. It's only the second time you watch it where you're like, that, he, he, he was the, there the whole time. The whole time. time. And, there, and there, you know, again, it's like the, at that dinner scene, like they're all having dinner and he's sitting there and he's like looking suspicious as hell. Yeah. But you, you, you don't know look, that, You don't know at the time you don't pick up on it. But when you watch it back, like, holy crap, he knows what's going to happen. Yeah, and then he knows what's going to happen. He's waiting for it. So one of the actors oh like is getting out a knife. He's going to go, oh, no, don't touch it. I know. And, you're, and then there's two interpretations. Oh, you're going to get hurt. Don't. It's dangerous. Or, and the don't, reality is, is, don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. Because we want it. Right. You know what I mean? This, and is, it, oh, this is the very rare God. moment when it's actually vulnerable. All right, yeah. So anyway, yeah, click right. back. So he's choking, and then, and then like, this is brilliant, the way they do this. And this is mammalian response that every single human being that saw it gets. Ah, oh my God, what's going on? What's going on? Then you get that punch of blood. You see the, his shirt yeah. move, and you get a punch of blood, and then everybody goes dead silent in the movie. Dead silence in the movie. Yeah. The and actors we, and the audience. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it almost feels like they turned the movie into slow-mo, but they didn't. <laughs> and it, it, it has a weird thing. It has yeah. that thing, that same thing that happens in our, when you experience something. Everybody got dead quiet. And until the thing came out, and, and then horror struck... That's when they come alive again, and they because they were just, sh just stopped in shock right. and, and fear. Oh my God, that scene is so powerful. And then you know you read things about the movie, like Behind they shot the they shot blood on the actors, and they didn't know that they were going to do it, and they were really horrified, like they yeah. were actually scaring the actors and doing. They didn't things. know exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And then the the thing going across the table. I watched a whole documentary how they just did that scene with the animal going, the creature going across the table, and it's complicated, and it was a hard scene to do, and they did it perfectly. It just worked so yeah. well. 
Yeah. So, so blown away by that scene. Still completely does exactly what it did in the theater the day I saw it. It still does that. And mm. that that is it. That's what we're talking about with these scenes. It's like, man, it, how after 30 it years... It touches something you know, yeah. very, very fundamental. Yeah. But, but it's not that, just that. It, it's that, but also they made the movie. Ridley Scott made that movie that well back then that you could watch it and it doesn't, you don't get taken out at all. Mm -hmm. At all. Yeah. Like it just, it totally, the whole movie holds up. But that scene, man. Oh, God, I love it. I, I, by the way, when I first saw that movie, I walked out. I was a kid. I couldn't deal with it. My da dad, you were scared. Dad should never have let me watch that movie. <laughs> I saw all those movies, guys. I saw yeah, all yeah. of them. I saw The Thing. I shouldn't have been allowed to see it. I was covering my eyes most of that movie. I was horrified by that movie. I, now these are my favorite movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I covered my eyes once growing up. We did yeah, never again. again. No, no. There was, it was um, The Sentinel. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Remember, I remember that, that movie. Remember the movie very well. What was I, it? I remember some old guy gets... His nose sliced off, and then the knife I think goes in his eye, and stuff comes out. And and I mean, I covered my eyes, but that's the only time I ever did it in your whole life. My whole life. <laughs> my my so only did, one time I looked away in the movie was the decapitation scene in The Omen. Ah, you wimp. That yeah, was, that was <laughs> that was scary. We, you know, we were yeah. kids. That was of scary. Yeah, that was. That movie was really scary, <laughs> and I regretted. I'm like, I'm never gonna do that again. That <laughs> movie. That movie gave me, I think. Like legit heebie-jeebies. Yeah. yeah, that's like, a creepy movie. Yeah, the movie's it's creepy. a very creepy movie. I remember going to a movie where you, Jay, you looked at your sneakers for the entire movie. Jo I think that was Jaws. Another movie that you almost ruined my life. You looked at his sneakers for the entire movie. That movie scared Scarred me. Scarred you for life. It's oh, wait, Now, first off, this is a phenomenon. Jaws... Mm -hmm. Like, and, and, and by the way, this is in my list as well. Yeah. But Jaws scarred everybody who saw it. <laughs> no, literally, everybody who saw Jaws walked away with PTSD on some level. That movie was that good. The scariness of that shark was that good. I mean, you, could, you could go to any, anybody who shark saw, week. Who, that's in our age range and say, hey, did Jaws screw you up when you were a kid? And yes. You're going to hear the word it yes. Scared the world. I believe you. It didn't, yeah. you know, it didn't mess me so, up too what's bad. The best, what's your favorite scene in that movie? Uh, so, oh my God, the whole movie is perfect. Yeah. It's and, one of those just masterfully crappy and, movies. And it was a mistake. And I love Spielberg, and Spielberg entertained me my entire life, but that movie was a mistake. Like they, they, because the shark broke. And well, okay. So they, they, had a, they, they were rewriting the script every night. For the next day, going up the shark, we can all have the shark. They were going to show the shark like five times more than they did. It's actually scarier than that shark. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that was a lesson. Like, that was a massive lesson for, mm. for movie makers, was like seeing how little they showed the shark and how much the shark was. And you know there. how you know, we learned that lesson in Jurassic Park, that opening scene when the, uh, the velociraptor kills the, the, one of the guys, the yeah. guards. You, don't, you never see it. Yeah. And that was, that was a massively scary scene. Yeah. Just like. Yeah. You know, when the cage moves, you know, like, oh, yeah. that was great. You never see the monster, maybe like a little glimpse of an eye or something. And uh, very, very scary. I mean, how Dr. Jaws, that was the first, like, real summer blockbuster. Yeah. That really set really the tone was. Yeah. the summer blockbuster. That's in 75 that came out? There's so many scenes. Uh, I'm going to tell you a few, which everyone, you know, you should be very familiar with them. But then I'll, then I'll talk about my favorite one. Of course, um, the scene when the kid is in the raft and, the, you know, mm -hmm. that, that chaos and that sense of panic and running mm -hmm. out of the water and the camera underneath the water and perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the perspective of the monster. Yeah. We're, we're seeing, we're, yes. we are the shark in that movie we're and it's like horrifying. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, I love that scene where the head comes out of the boat. That was another horribly, oh, yeah. horribly frightening That's scene. A good yeah, start. Jump scare. Yeah. The fight with the shark, the whole end, the whole third act of that movie. The, the whole, whole third, third act, act, the entire thing. Yeah. But, but wait, wait, but I, let me say my that. scene. Yeah. This, is, this is, I gotta say. When Quint is telling the story yes. of the Indianapolis. That's yes. the most powerful scene in the movie. By far, and a couple of cool points, uh, side points on that, the first time they filmed it, he was so drunk that they couldn't do it. <laughs> Did they have that footage? I'd love to see I'm that. I'm sure oh somebody does. But they, they had to sure. redo it. They were, it was, yeah, because that actor was, I guess, having al alcohol problems at the time. Um, but then he, they, they do that scene, and there's a, there's the, this is the thing. that there was a, In Full Metal Jacket, you were explaining to me mm -hmm. how there's moments in the movie where it's designed so you have a, a moment of comfort. Yeah. And they're walking through the hole, and it's supposed to be like walking into the womb, and yeah, like yeah. the guys are talking, and they have like that moment where you, know the, you just know in, intuitively that no one's going to get killed, yeah, right? Yeah. So this is one of those moments. Yeah. They're, 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 the they're laughing, the they're storm. drinking, they're joking, they're showing scars and, and all that. And then he tells the story. Bunk. You know, the you know, shark's eyes, the dead eyes, like a doll's, doll's eyes. eyes. And, he goes, <laughs> and he talks about the screaming. And, 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 it, and then you get like, you get quiet. 
you, you, you fall into the story. Oh my God. And then the shark comes mm -hmm. right at the end of the story. Right. Right at the end of the story, like that's when the fight the fight begins the with the shark. Sequence, yeah. Oh my and god, he, that did, story is didn't so Didn't he good. riff that? I mean, he he basically. I don't know. I don't know how much of it he made up, but mm -hmm. that Probably different things. The actor sold that yeah. so Killed. unbelievably Killed well. Like it is one of the best moment of, moments of acting that I think I've seen in my yeah, life. The I character is iconic. Yeah, because the character. Yeah. yeah. He's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. He comes at you. Doesn't seem to be living. You know when he does the thing on the sc he scratches his fingernails yeah. and he, try he drew a funny picture of a person and he eats the crackers and like all these little things that that, that character had. To me, were just a build up for that moment. You needed to load your gun with the cool, the yes. interesting little things about the character for that moment to be as effective. And that is the genius of that, mm -hmm. of the things they got right in that movie. But I always wondered what the movie would have been if the shark worked. Mm -hmm. What yeah. would have happened in our alternate universe if the shark worked? The, the people, the, the, the company yeah. that built the shark knew what they were getting into and it, it just worked. Like, would the movie have been eh? You know what I mean? Wow, I went to, who yeah. knows? What would the, the alternate, universe. alternate I would love to yeah. talk to Spielberg about that. He's the only one I think that would truly know. Like, let me tell you what I think would have happened if the shark worked. Answer. I want to hear him say that. Yeah. Um, Good question for. Conference. So we're just scratching the surface. Yeah, uh, we could do yeah, so We might have to do a part two. I think this. we should, and I really want our audience, guys, send us in your favorite moments. We'll analyze all the all the ones that you do, and we'll just do another. We'll one We'll do of a these. follow up with yeah. with your recommendations. Because I've got like ten more on my list. I know, we could I just know. keep going. So if you like Alpha Quadrant Six, guys, come on. Become, become a member, become a patron of ours. We want to keep doing this. We love doing the show. We want your suggestions. We want you to join the, the Star Trek Phaser Rifle Contest. You can see it over, over Bob's shoulder. If you switch the camera real quick, you'll see one of the ones that is not done. We're not done building it yet. We're deliberately not finishing the build because we, we're, you know, it's fun. I like to look at the pieces yeah, yeah. And, and it's like something to play with. Um, you can go to alphaquadrant6.com forward slash T3 to register. You can register for free, but if you do become a patron, you get more entries in. That's that's how these things work. Um, and we would also love it if you just liked us on YouTube and, and told your friend about us. And we'll see you next week, maybe in a monster's mouth, mm -hmm. right? Maybe flush down a toilet in the Matrix, Bob. Imagine that. I'd love it. Would you, I mean, would you grab onto the walls and try to stop, or would you ride it like as your last ride? Oh, you don't know where it's going. I know yeah. it's hard. Could have been going to like the the composter or something. I know. Right? Right? <laughs> Luckily, he popped. Like they knew what was going to happen yeah, yeah. to him, but he pops out of the end, other end of the toilet. We're all like, there should have been. They, they, there should have been like decayed bodies. There, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? There should. It could have oh, been man. really. That could have been. It could have been nasty stuff. I think I would have jumped on the robot. And, and, you know that thing, and then it like gets. A